Hi guys, uh, I want to talk today about um, optimizing SketchUp models. Um, so we all know the, the suite of tools that SketchUp has it is great for capturing, capturing ideas and building a model. And then commonly people will use uh, something to give sort of context or a setting, some sort of entourage uh, around that model to um, to improve the look and you know be it um, SketchUp Warehouse or TurboSquid or any number of sites that you can get um, additional elements that you can drop into your model around your model to to give it context and additionally um, people start uh, adding more details to the model again with with elements that they get uh, online and they just drag them in and uh, to, to sort of really sell uh, uh, that image or, or, or that look um, so the question really is is how much detail is enough um, well the, the, the sort of short answer is uh, it depends um, but for visualization work um, you know if someone came to you and was new to SketchUp and they said hey I want to um, model something and I'm going to model every grain of sand that goes into the um, cement between the bricks to build the house uh, you, you might say well that's just a ridiculous uh, level of detail that's not necessary and if they came to you and said uh, I'm going to uh, model every single brick um, uh, in order to do this model of the house again you might say that's just completely over the top as far as uh, the amount of detail and the reason it's it's over the top and we sort of uh, I think all would agree that that's over the top uh, for a visualization is because it adds nothing to the final um, uh, look and is just a lot of work and a huge file size so uh, over the years, uh, I've been using SketchUp for 20 years um, and I've seen thousands of models from thousands of SketchUp users. And the one common thing I saw over and over again was um, the basic model and then um, sort of entourage added in, dropped in, um, and often users not so sort of recognizing what the cost of those were. Um, so I wrote a free plugin called Goldilocks and the purpose of Goldilocks is simply to um, be able to graph and point, you know, point out parts of your model which are using much more geometry um, than, than the rest of the model. Uh, it may be that's your intention um, or it may be that actually you didn't realize that that single peg on the wall that you added has more polygons in it than the rest of the model put together. Um, so Goldilocks is uh, a simple tool you set it up for you set a particular viewpoint um, uh, in SketchUp and you enable um, Goldilocks and it will give you a report and tell you where those those uh, detail uh, highly detailed parts are that you might not have uh, realized so let's get right into it okay I've got a model here um, that's made of um, lots of different pieces from the SketchUp warehouse um, so if we just uh, get right in and uh, use Goldilocks and we're going to test the geometry, look at the geometry. Okay, so it gives you a picture a bit like this. Um, it's, it's not as complicated as it looks. What it's showing you is the uh, these mark right at the top is showing that the um, element in this model that has the highest edge density so it's got the highest numbers of polygons or faces within the smallest area is something like uh, this this element here so I can click on this and it will actually point the camera um, at the uh, element in the scene and uh, select it so you can actually see it's this tiny chocolate this tiny piece of chocolate um, it's showing has 12,700 faces in this tiny little space. You know, it may be that you wanted that piece of chocolate uh, to have a huge amount of detail, but perhaps you didn't. And actually, um, unknowingly, you've added something that's uh, got a crazy amount of detail. If we click on some of these other things, um, it sort of reveals some interesting stuff also. So again, this cookie, um, it's got uh, almost 20,000 faces in it. Um, and it's just a tiny little uh, part of um, the model. So the useful thing with Goldilocks is to be able to um, sort of drill down and find these pieces. Um, I'm looking down further down here and we've got um, something which is a coffee cup. Uh, so I can just I can click on this and it will highlight and we'll just toggle it. Um, but you can see again we've got uh, 56,000 faces in that coffee cup 
it may be that coffee cup is incredibly important to the model. It's the halo part of the uh, the model that you really need, or maybe that actually, uh, as probably in this case, we've introduced something that has a lot more detail than we perhaps need. Um, looking down some of these other pieces, you can see um, some uh, element that has 10,800, there's lots of them. There's lots of these 10,800 uh, pieces, and they can see, they turn out to be the hinges on uh, these doors. Uh, so one of the things that's useful, uh, I find, is to um, go into Styles and select X-Ray. Um, and what that does is it puts SketchUp into uh, this mode so you can sort of see through stuff. And you actually can start spotting a whole bunch of extra details here. Uh, in these cupboards, for example, we've got a whole bunch of runners um, that are going to add nothing to the render. And we can use the features of um, SketchUp to uh, use tags and layers. So if I just turn off that layer of you know the, the hardware, which for another use case may be very uh, uh, necessary, but for this rendering is not necessary. So I just close that. Um, and so you know by by iterating and using um, Goldilocks, we can uh, determine pieces. And just sort of sanity check, is this something I want or is this something I'd like to hide for this particular um, shot or this particular use of this model? So just turning off X-Ray again. Another neat feature of uh, Goldilocks is it can also look at textures. So the quality of textures is very important for getting something that has, you know, really has some pop and um, uh, realism. But equally, you can go kind of over the top. So if I set the camera up to be you know just here for example at some reasonable thing distance and I ask the um, it to look at uh, textures then it's there's a few pieces um, oh, sorry I've got things highlighted so it's just taking the thing that's highlighted just click on that um, and textures so it's going to gather all the textures um, for this particular viewpoint so um, the important thing is that for this particular viewpoint, what kind of textures are needed? And we get a, a report that's very similar. Um, it's highlighting uh, that there are some um, textures which are quite large. Um, one called coffee, um, which I suspect is uh, the surface of this coffee cup here. Um, that's um, it's almost it's 3,000 by 3,000 pixels which is pretty large I mean as a you know rule of thumb um, for things that you're not really close to you're not going to need more than uh, 2k by 2k um, and again there's some there's something called material 5 here um, which uh, if I um, open um, materials here and we look at so, oh, that, right, that is Material 5, right. Um, okay, so this is the image that's being used. It's, uh, it's an it's a image that's uh, on a bottle of olive oil at the back of the kitchen, and it's got an incredibly detailed uh, texture. Again, that may be something you want, or maybe something that you didn't realize you were bloating out your model with, um, with, these, uh, with these very, very high-resolution textures. So that's that's in a nutshell what um, Polish, uh, what um, Goldilocks does. Um, it's really just a free tool to allow you to just sanity check uh, your models.